Hey y'all, welcome to Stiver's Homestead. I'm Zach. And I'm Jen. And this woman has been working her butt off in this kitchen the every past day. couple days. <laughs> yeah, every day, but a little extra step um, here the past couple. So we do have some Airbnb guests. Um, Jen made them an, that awesome roast and gravy mashed potato dinner. The French onion one that we showed y'all a while ago that everybody loved. She made them that for dinner. Yep. Cinnamon rolls, homemade cinnamon rolls this morning. And then we had the pineapples and bananas come out. Those are very tasty. Yes, they are. And now she just got done peeling a bunch of carrots that are going in the freeze dryer now. Yeah, it was two bag, two big bags of carrots and then like four carrots from another bag. And it filled up all four trays. So yeah. we're going to put those in the freeze dryer. It's crazy. You just don't realize how much those trays have. It's wild. Yeah. We're gonna try to get through this. We're gonna try to get through this. We got turkeys gobbling, roosters crowing, and this is really good lighting. <laughs> they agree. Yeah. So today, I, we haven't talked about it much because we've been so busy doing the gardens and everything, but we have goats that are pregnant. Yeah, we've been on baby watch for, like, for about a week now. Yeah. They're officially past their due date today. So, any time now. So, we thought this would be a good opportunity while we were up here checking the ladies to explain to you all about goat pregnancy and goat birth. So, out of all of these goats, we currently have three that are pregnant. Butters, Anna, and Elsa. They uh, they were the ones that were pregnant last year, and they're the ones that had these little bitty kids that you see everywhere as well. But we decided to bypass the first year of our kids. So we could have bred the kids this year. It would have been fine. It would have been safe. However, like Lucy specifically wasn't up to the weight that I wanted her to be because she was a runt. She was bottle fed. Right. And then some of the other ones, they weren't as comfortable with us yet. So we didn't want to just cause complete chaos. So we just decided to breed the same moms that we bred last year. They all had wonderful births. Um, butters, you know, this is, I don't know how many pregnancies she's, she's had, but it's definitely the third. Yeah, However, she's only had one be, with us. Yeah, but there could be more. So, um, she is why, she, that's why she's so big. She shows the most, she has really big kids. And Anna and Elsa, you know, it's hard to tell from the camera that they're pregnant, but we can see it because we're with them every day. So, as you can see, we don't have a buck here, but if you were following back in October, we rented a buck from our friends Honey Um Homestead. They live in Ohio. He has family in Eastern Kentucky, so they brought a buck. Um, Billy Ray stayed at our house for about a month. He got all of them pregnant, and then he went on back home. So that's how we had him. We don't have a buck here. We don't generally keep bucks anymore unless we absolutely have to. Um, but Finding a good buck is difficult. Um, yes. The one we had was very vicious, tried to kill me every time. <laughs> Yeah. Billy Ray was great, uh, and we're talking with Honey I'm Homestead because once you got that good bloodline, mm -hmm. like we would probably be willing to take a buck like Billy Ray. Yeah. Um, so their goats are pregnant, so maybe we can do some kind of trade offs or something on the lines of that to maybe get a buck down the road. Yeah. But um, I did want to say that Billy Ray was a mini Nubian, mm -hmm. so all of our girls are completely full size. Butters is a full blooded Nubian. Um, Anna, the white one, is a Sonnen mix. I don't know what she's mixed with, but we know she's primarily Sonnen, which we love. If you're looking into goats, look at Sonnen. They're the greatest goats. And then Elsa is a Nupine, so it's a Nubian mixed with an Alpine breed. So all of these babies that are coming out are gonna be many. Yeah, they're gonna uh, be little. Like medium size, not as small as a Nigerian dwarf, but not yeah. as big as them, and that's pretty exciting. So Billy Ray got with our girls on October 17th. That was the first time that they were together. Um, did they get pregnant on that day? If I had to guess, probably not, because they didn't know each other. You know, they had to get acquainted, make sure everyone was safe. He was a little nervous. The girls kind of are just a lot to handle. They're really in your face. So it probably happened a couple days after that. We were watching, we did see it happen. Um, so 
it's been 151 days. I don't know when you'll see this video, but it's been 151 days you'll since they were bred. Day. <laughs> <laughs> so goats are pregnant on an average of 150 days. Now it ranges about 143 to 152, three. Um, it just depends on the goat, the number of pregnancies, all that kind of stuff. But they are one day past due and we are all ready. However, the only one really showing signs so far is Butters. Yeah. Um, well, we'll she was she was friendliest with Billy Ray to yes. start, then Elsa and Anna. You got to really warm up to Elsa. Yeah. <laughs> even though, funny enough, yeah. the funny part about these three goats is we didn't even think Elsa was pregnant last mm -hmm. year. And it was our first time she was pregnant. And she was the first one that had babies. Yeah. And she slipped them right out. She would call her Fit Mama. Yeah. Because she's just good like that. <laughs> All right. She's going to show you some details on acknowledging pregnancy. Yeah. Betsy, you been in the pool. Look at you. You look cooled off and sweaty. <laughs> Oh yeah, nice and water all over you. Shake it off, buddy, shake it off. So like I said, it's probably hard for you all to see and to be able to tell that they're pregnant, but we know them, we know their size, and we can see it, we can feel it. Another sign that they are pregnant, whether it's the first time or, excuse me, Ethel, <laughs> the first time or the 10th time is their udders start to fill up again. So she obviously had babies last year, but okay, take me down on. I'm interrupting her eating. During the winter and when, they're not, when they don't have their babies nursing, their socks kind of just, they get tighter up and they, they don't disappear, but they're, they're not as noticeable. So and every if time, you're not yes, when they get pregnant and it starts to get towards the end, those bags get bigger and they expand again because they're filling up with milk. Hi, little Cheek Cheek. I heard you peg mommy. Yeah, she's the one that pegs me. Put your finger on me. Oh! She's mean. Dang good. Oh! <laughs> <laughs> to my age. The other way to tell is their ligaments. So they have these two little ligaments that go down the sides of their tails all the time. But the closer they get to the end of pregnancy, they literally, they spread just like a woman's body does, you know, getting you ready for childbirth. They spread out and then you can no longer feel them. So that's where we're at with Butters. You cannot feel hers anymore. She's completely sunken in. Um, and that's how we know she's almost ready. But it still could be like 24 to 48 hours. Okay, a little bit noisy barn. Nobody can give birth in this environment. They did it last year. Okay, the other way to tell is any kind of oozing. She's a little wet in the area, but there's no oozing yet. When you see it, you know, there's no mistaking it. It's, it's a lot. It's, it's kind of like the mucus plug. Everything just starts preparing and coming out. And the oozing is kind of like the ligaments. Like we can tell you, but until you feel it or see it, you don't truly know what we're talking about. Um, it's, I mean, it's a lot that comes out of them and you can definitely tell it's like two pencils and then they're just not there on the ligament side of things. So those are all your telltale signs. Um, Elsa and Anna are starting to get there. Yeah, and, and that's another thing I was gonna say. Elsa and Anna don't really show any more signs. They never show uncomfortableness. You just can't tell on them. But mm -hmm. Butters, you can tell. She starts to breathe heavy. She's just a bigger goat as it is. Um, and she just gets real uncomfortable by the way she walks. She starts to waddle around and that's how you know it's almost time for her. But with that being said, she usually is the last to give birth, yeah. even though she's the first to show. Yeah, and that's kind of the thing. They can have long labors, right? So mm -hmm. even though they're like, well, ligaments are gone 24 to 48 hours. Well, she can still take 72 hours, yeah. but be in labor. Like she just is longer. So here's kind of the plan. Um, we're much better suited this year than we were last year. Cause as y'all can tell, we do have stalls. Not everything has gates. However, we do have one here. That's our milking area. This one does have a gate, which we'll get one in. This is a gate that we just have set up to block holes, but we can use that for a stall. But ultimately, they're, if, if we don't catch it, they're gonna have birth wherever they wanna have birth at. And then what we'll do after that is kind of ease them into a stall just so they can have some privacy making sure the babies are latching um, and getting milk. Cause it's a, you, you got to find amount of time. You, I mean, you want to see the babies attached just to know that the mamas are going to milk them. Um, but if not, you need to keep close watch because you might have to pull it and be a bottle baby. Yeah. We basically make a little maternity ward and yeah. this is our biggest stall. It can hold, really, it can hold all the goats. Yeah. So it'll be just fine for three moms and we'll just make a little maternity ward. They'll be safe in there away from chickens and other goats and Tilly. Tilly. And yeah, Dolly. Tilly. <laughs> no, which Dolly's probably going to look at like more yeah. kids <laughs> that I got to protect. Dag on. Yeah. <laughs> There's Dolly. Hopefully she's not eating my eggs. Oh, 
And you can actually tell on butters. I know this is kind of gross to some, but she's a little wet. So we're going to keep a close eye on her. I think we may be in game time for her. But uh, what I wanted to tell you all is, so we have three this fall that are uh, pregnant, but no, three this spring that are pregnant, but next fall we'll have butters, Lucy, Anna, Ethel, Elsa, and Laverne and Shirley over there, the two black ones. Not you, Buster. You can't get pregnant. Buster's that weather, if you're unsure. So he is not intact. He had to hang out with our last buck, Charlie, so he just gets to live a good life because anybody that had to live with Charlie 24 seven gets to have some retirement. Um, so yeah, we'll have, what? how many did I just count? Three, four, five, seven goats, all pregnant this fall. Now we do have two Nigerian dwarfs. Here's one, that's Lola, hi Lola. And there's Angel. Nobody touches her. Nobody messes with angels. Sometimes Lola will let you. And they came with the herd um, when we originally got a big bunch of goats. And we don't breed them because if you breed a buck or you breed does, the buck has to be smaller than the doe. And the Nigerian dwarfs just don't work out for us for that because even though we had a mini Nubian, they're still much bigger than these mommies. Um, so they just get to kind of hang out. They're our pets for the most part, the two Nigerian dwarfs. And uh, their mama, we tried to milk. It just wasn't happening for us. We know a lot of people like Nigerian dwarfs. Just wasn't our style. Um, it was hard for my hands and even Jen's, Jen's hand to try to get in there and milk Nigerian dwarfs. I know a lot of people like them because of their size. Um, but to be honest, ours that we've had are the, mo the most unfriendly style goat that we've ever seen. Um, so, you know, they just get to be, they get to be company for everybody else. So speaking of pregnancies, Daisy is also pregnant, but she's not due until the May time frame. And Hank is showing a lot of interest in Flossie, so. Yeah, Flossie's definitely we'll not pregnant. Uh, you can tell her udder hasn't grown any, no. but Daisy's is really starting to grow. And kind of the same with goats, udders, belly, um, and then you can also start telling in their hips yeah. as well. Uh, but I can just tell by days, that thing's starting to fill up. All right, we are back in the house. And <laughs> go ahead. So every midwife needs a go bag, right? It's me, I'm the midwife. So this is my bag. But first I wanna show you the bag, because if you know, you know. <laughs> <laughs> also, it's the biggest bag I could find, so. <laughs> All right, so we've got towels. You might be thinking, why in the world would you use white towels during a birth? Because they're bleachable and they were the cheap ones at Walmart. These are not, I mean, they're soft, but they're, we went and got the cheapest towels possible because they get wrecked. So I've got two in a bundle here and I've got four more, I think. Basically two per goat. Yeah, just because you never know how many kids they're gonna have. Then I've got a bag in the bag with medical supplies. So gloves full arm, hand to shoulder, just in case. I had these last year, thank the Lord I didn't have to use them because that I don't even know. That's, that's, an, gonna, that's gonna be Zach's job. That's another if you know, you know. <laughs> yeah. uh, but no, the primary reason for that is say we have a baby that's breech, yep. um, that puts the baby and the mama in danger and we need to go and get that baby out. And to do so, you gotta get arm deep. There it is. We've got black strap molasses because after they give birth, you want to give them a little boost of sugar. Anybody who gives birth, you know, it kind of crashes your blood sugar because you're putting so much into it. So we mix like a little bit of this into some warm water. We take a little tea kettle and warm it up, put it in a bucket, and then that just gives the moms their little bit of boost back that they gave to the babies. We have a tube of selenium just in case. You never know if babies are going to be born with leg dysfunctions or not able to move as much. Not everybody uses selenium. Um, it's something that we have on hand just in case we need it. We haven't had to yet, so that's nice. And last but not least is iodine. So after the babies are born, you wanna dip their little umbilical cord straight into the iodine that keeps them from getting infected, getting any kind of um, warts or bubbles on them, and it just keeps them safe. Lighting has failed in the house. <laughs> Not as nice as it was in it's the barn. Yeah, we got some bright lights behind you that are shining to us. But yeah, so grow bags and kind of what? I, all right, so I guess what I'm trying to say is that's all you need. Yeah. for the most part. Um, there's a lot of other stuff that you can put in this bag um, that is not so 
Natural. Natural. Yeah, that would probably be the best way to say it. We try to do everything as natural as possible. We also deworm as soon as they mm -hmm. give birth. Um, but, you know, we don't do chemical dewormer. We do herbs. So we'll do that right after the babies are born. It's perfectly safe for the moms to pass on to their babies in mm -hmm. milk form. So that's all okay. Yeah, and yeah, that's a great point. Actually, it's funny off camera. I said I have nothing to add. You're, you're like you're killing it. This is good. Um, but I'm I prepared. <laughs> right, but I do want to kind of explain that a little bit. So Jen knew a long time ago she wanted goats, and so she prepared for goats. I wanted to be a grandma. Yeah, she wanted to be a grandma. Um, but I guess what I'm getting at is she learned the commercial way of goats. She learned the wrong way of goats, and she learned the natural way of goats. And then she narrowed down to what it is that our family wanted our goats to be. Um, and she did that by a lot of books. A lot of books that she has, as always, that's linked down below if you're curious into some of the books. Same with the herb books, you got goat books in there too. Um, but it really makes me prideful of her because it makes my farming job so much easier. Because I just get to do it. And like she tells me what to do and when to do it. And it's nice, so my point is, if you're doing this as a family or if you're doing this by yourself, you need someone in that group that is learning and making sure that they understand the best practices with your livestock just to make sure that they stay healthy, to make sure births go well. Um, obviously, there's gonna be some unexpected things that pop up, um, but we've already made our decisions in that. Um, you know, it's part of farming. Unfortunately, not everything goes with butterflies and rainbows, and there may be death, and you kinda have to prep yourself for a stillborn or breach or something like that. But thanks to her, I feel very well prepared because I know she'll just tell me what to do in those different situations so one more thing that we do have on hand is colostrum just in case any of the babies were yep. to be rejected um first we'll try to get colostrum from the moms but that's going to be difficult mm -hmm. when they already have babies nursing on them um so we do have a colostrum replacer just in case we need it because that's most important in the first 24 hours right. is for them to have colostrum yeah and you can get do, do you have the nipples here or where are they they're on okay the let me show them real quick so if you go to your favorite farm store whatever that is church cloud roll king local i like local here we got a really good group of people um get these guys so you want the ones that actually twist on uh we've had the ones that stretch over bottles Terrible. They, leak. they leak and they're the worst if you get these though that actually twist onto a bottle it'll work for any bottle so like a coke bottle there's any 20 ounce bottle that you can get at a gas station these will attach to so it's always good to have those around like she said in case you need it colostrum is the main thing you need because after that you can then milk the goat mm -hmm. you know um, that rejected the babies or whatever it is you can then get the milk from her and don't have to worry about milk replacer as much as you do as colostrum Things not pictured that you don't see. There's chairs where you get some chairs up in the barn because if they all go on the same day, it makes for a really long day. And in between, you just wanna kinda of sit for a second and not have to sit on the floor. Um, so we'll put those up there so we're able to watch them and just hang out with them, watch for signs. And, and a bucket for the um, blackstrap molasses water. Yeah. So we'll get a bucket up there, just a small one that we can probably put a screw into the barn wood and then hang it on that so then the goats can just go over to it in that little maternity ward stall that we have and they can drink out of it. Yeah, the exciting part about this year is we're not in a polar vortex. Yes. Um, I really want y'all, if you're interested in this video that you're watching right now, you must be interested in goats a little bit. So we went through all birth for all three of those mamas through a polar vortex last mm -hmm. year. Um, and the videos were quite entertaining. There's two of them. Um, one with Elsa and then one when we caught Anna and Butters and you get to see it all. <laughs> um, but it was freezing cold. So if you want to see all this stuff in action, don't want to wait for our ladies to have them now, go check those out. I think you'll really like them. And the last thing I want to talk to you about is after birth. So after you get out of birth, uh, well, I guess that's a good thing to point out real quick too. We don't have any interaction really. Like we don't get involved. We're just there as support manner. I'll catch them. Yeah, if need be kind of thing. Uh, but your goats are going to then eat all that stuff. Mm -hmm. um, little, it's, it's very nutritious for them. It's very good. So that's going to be something that you're going to see. Just let it happen. They know what they're doing. That's right, and they'll lick the babies clean. But milking, so after the birth has happened, when do we get to start getting that beautiful goat's milk? Um, around six to eight weeks is when we'll start truly weaning them off. Six weeks probably is the, the close time, and we'll do kid sharing. Yep. So what that just means is we'll put the babies up at night, and the morning we'll milk the mamas, and then the babies get the mamas the rest of the day, and we just continue to do that routine. Um, this is very beneficial because I know a lot of people talk about, well, once you have a dairy animal, you're stuck at your farm. Not if you have kids. Once you have kids, you can do a great sharing between owners and those, um, and it works out really well. So that's what we'll be doing. 
We also hand milk. Um, we do have a milking machine. We don't like it. We tried it. Um, we just like doing the hand milking part. And so then that'll give us more goat's milk soap coming up in the very near future because that's what we make our soap out of. Yep. Sorry if that was a little shaky. I talk with my hands, as you all have noticed. <laughs> and I was trying to talk with the hand holding the camera, so that was my bad. Um, but we hope you all enjoyed this video. We hope if you're into goats, have them, experience, or thinking about them, that this video was helpful because it's always good to see how others do it. Yeah, we have a lot to say about it. And we just, we know a lot and yeah. we have a lot to say. So it's hard to contain it all in one video and make it entertaining. But if it's something you're interested in, just let us know and we'll do more. Yeah. We can do specific videos. Absolutely. And hopefully we'll be as lucky as last year and catch some live births yeah. because that is the fun part and be staying tuned for those videos. And yes, we'll be gardening in between them. <laughs> All right, y'all. If you haven't subscribed, make sure you do down below. We love y'all. Until the next one. Bye. Bye.